Hello, hello, everybody. This is a quick mic check. Um, <clears throat> just making sure it's coming through both ears. Just had an audio issue. Please let me know if it's weird at all. I will get it fixed before the stream starts. Um, otherwise, I'm taking a very minor setup period right now, and I will see you in about two and a half minutes. Woo! Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games stream. I am your host, Eric, your community ambassador. I am joined with Gary on the line. Say hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Wonderful. We're going to be collating your questions through the course of this stream, where I'm going to be playing Nightmare Difficulty of my save that I haven't played in 5,000 years. Um, I've been out of from the streams a little bit. I was a little bit under the weather, but Gary's been uh, cruising through them. Uh, really do appreciate that, Gary. Um, today, what you can expect from the stream is the Unreal Engine 5 Dove Branch is what I am playing from. So there could be little issues and mistakes along the way, or you could actually see some healthy clarity and progress uh, that we've been making on this front. Now, um, all things considered, there shouldn't be much of a difference, if any at all, from the visual side of things from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. That's one of the biggest points uh, that we've made in our statements prior. But for anybody who is wondering, the biggest reason we're doing this is to continue supporting the game as well as the engine accordingly, okay? It's not to try anything super crazy or um, experimental. The main goal of this is for support purposes. So. Uh, all things considered, games should operate basically exactly the same. And that's why I'm showing it, so that you can see that. Um, there's still a couple of little details that we are accomplishing through the migrating process, uh, but uh, yeah. Otherwise, um, I wanted to unlock some more engine colors because I actually don't, <laughs> I don't have a lot. Um, I was <laughs> kind of going through some of the things that I have and I don't have, and I was like, what? I can't really do much. Um, so I was kind of cruising through some of the uh, challenges that I've done. I've done three challenges, that's it. What? I'm slacking. So I'm gonna try and destroy two drones with one mine. 
While I'm focused on this Zarkov Explorer, we're gonna head over to Zarkov. We're gonna complete another location challenge and complete two high risk areas over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and track this one. These two are pretty easy to remember, so we're going to do that. But uh, hello to everybody over on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook, and over on Steam. We've got you all pulled up. We are reading all the messages. Everybody's so happy and so lively. We've got Michael in the chat today. Woo! CEO of Rockfish Games. Always a pleasure having you here, Michael. Uh, man, we've been making some plays. Development is looking keen, guys. Just really exciting stuff. So, all right. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. I also see some glad you're feeling better. I uh, really do appreciate that. Uh, you guys are, are a lovely community around here. So, all right, um, in our inventory, oh my gosh, a little bit of clutter. Uh, you know, we're gonna just tally this up by value. Definitely gonna need to go to a shop pretty soon, um, but I am pretty happy with Wrath of the Fallen and Omni Manus helping us out. Pigeon Stare, it's getting a little out leveled here. Um, the shield might not be a bad idea, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna go with what we have currently with this particular loadout. Let's see what we can do. Uh, but as I said, we are heading over to Zarkov. That's the goal. Um, we did complete the mission chain that we had to defend the home base uh, last time. So that's what you're seeing with the dialogue here. We're not going to be too focused on the mission chain today. Um, slowing things down since we're only level 22. We don't want to trigger that last mission yet. So, um, yeah. Take things a little bit slower. If they weren't talking, I would use this. But I guess we'll just uh, kind of go the old-fashioned way for now. Just for anybody who is not aware or acclimated to the streams, um, questions that you guys do ask, we will collate them and then respond to them in sections of the stream. So approximately 20-ish minutes from now, 25 minutes from now, we will gather all the questions that are asked and we will slide right through them. We will get all of them responded to so nobody's left hanging. Thanks, Marie. When I send the call, we'll assemble about that stuff. Cool, cool. Woo! All right. Actually, I'm a little surprised I haven't triggered the, um, what's it called? The, the broadcast leveling everything up. I'm surprised I haven't triggered that yet. Maybe I didn't meet the prerequisites. I'm pretty sure I do though. That's interesting. I must be really close to it. But regardless, we're heading over to Zarkov, just looking at some beautiful scenery in the process. Alright. Perfect timing. Absolutely beautiful. Alright, that's... Alright. absolutely nailed it all right what that broadcast is doing is it's covering all the locations that we've been to and now if you look at these guys the last time we were here i think they were like level 17 and 18. now they are in some cases higher level than us so we are going to need to be uh, a bit more careful now take our time but you know also try to get where we need to go Whew. I could have sworn I took out these uh, turrets before but that's fine that's fine this is fine Zarkov. This is where we want to be. We want to start completing some of the uh, location challenges here. We've got these done. That one's done. That one's done. Uh, all the ones, basically you see the check marks. That means everything's done in those locations. 
Uh, do we have all of them done? What in the world? We sh Surely we don't, because Zarkov needs us to complete another location challenge. Uh, that's interesting. Oh, hello there. Teleport drones, man. Excellent. <laughs> Got him on that one. A little bit of loot, cloak field generator, that's always nice. We do have um, what I actually think is one of the best ship passives on the Sentinel, where every time that we collect an energy orb, we get this little immunity shield. That immunity shield lasts for about a second. But man, we are... We're going to be in a really good position if we can generate even more energy spheres. Because every time we collect one, we get that shield up. It's just for a moment, but be very powerful. Really good. I see somebody say, I hope I can get this game soon on PlayStation 5. You can get it right now if you want. It is available over there. You can acquire it on a PlayStation 5. So looking at this and seeing the location challenges being checked here tells me that I might have an issue with my save, actually. This might be uh, uh, because it's a dev build and I've been playing this every single stream for I don't know how long even while we've been updating the game. Uh, may have caused some issues with some unlockables. And if that's the case, that's fine. We'll go for uh, what we can do. Let's see. Outlaw drone carrier. Nice. Woo! Oh, that's actually, that is stinking cool looking. I like that. Nah. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, why not? No wings, excellent. A lot of these containers are just automatically generated as opposed to specific to the area. We have <clears throat> containers that are specific that you need to go forth and try to uncover. And then we have ones that are just like random like that, that always populate regardless of if you've been to the location or not, provide some random loot get to it you collect it kind of in the similar vein of everspace one actually and how you can just collect loot as you go navia orbit each depot i mean i know that we completed that one because i'm confident we have a uh, fusion hook right yeah okay music's nice let me just read this again, make sure I'm not going crazy. Zarkov's will complete three location challenges. Okay. High-risk areas. We should probably start looking for high-risk areas. Um, do we have any in Zarkov? Yes, we do. Look at that. Look at that. Um, enemies regening and two bosses. Sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> Let's go for it. What could possibly go wrong? Two drones with one mine. I, what I really should have do is whenever I was fighting that stinking uh, drone carrier, I should have just crafted a, uh, a mine really quick. In fact, do we have some mines? 
I should have swapped on the spot. Doesn't look like we have any, so we're just gonna craft some real quick. Yeah, why not? Mm. I don't know about any of you guys, but I've been listening to the soundtrack while I work. And man, it has been, oh, it's been so good. It's been so good. We added uh, a lot more tracks to it somewhat recently too. Basically doubling the amount of tracks on the um, soundtrack. So if you ended up buying it real quick, um, well, it just expanded. And if you didn't buy it, well, now it's, you're getting uh, twice as much for the same amount. Pretty fun, neat stuff there for you. Would recommend. Oh my gosh! Did you guys know that you can use an ultimate on your ship? I'm just finding out about this. It's really strong. Wow, I feel really good about it. I know, it's, it's mind blowing. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. I don't think my keyboard's got one of those keys. <laughs> Gosh. Dang, but seriously, I did that was a tremendous amount of damage. Feels good. Now I am using um some legendary items. I didn't really talk about them too much, but uh they are definitely contributing to our crowd control. The uh item that I'm very much enjoying ties directly with the missile defense system. And every time we use the missile defense system, it actually just attacks nearby targets. Now, I think I also have this, uh, I have the ability to, I think it's when I take damage, there's a chance to, um, to uh, reduce my cooldowns for my devices. I think I've got that one. I can check in a moment. But man, as of right now, geez, this I'm just shredding. Here, let's try and let's try and do this. I definitely killed them way too fast. I might need to use the the regular um, mines now. I'm thinking about it. Corrosion might not trigger since they might die at like different intervals based on the corrosion. Firing at that rock, thinking it was the ship. That was silly. Ah, it does work. Beautiful. These game devs, they're thinking. Okay, what's the what's the mastery of that? Uh, destroy an enemy from at least four thousand meters. Oh, okay. We might need to uh, swap to a scout for a moment. Woo! Ah, you know what? That teleport drone's not worth it. I'm just gonna leave him alone. Certainly hope I won't regret that decision. Oh my gosh! Suddenly taking all kinds of damage! Wowzers! Quick, quick time out, please. Surprise! I don't think I've ever seen the Sentinel fire its alt while it's cloaked. That actually looks super cool. I don't know why I didn't pause and get a screenshot of that. That was really neat. So how many more I can take out. What is our effective alt damage here? Okay, so we've got we've got a pretty decent amount of utility. Like it's it's actually our highest stat right now. We're level 22 for those of you who like are pounding out the end game and maximizing all your stats to like be over 4,000. That's great for you. Um, but close to 1,500 is actually really good for us right now. Um, hitting this uh, whoop other hand uh, 197 uh, percent addition 
to our device usage. Uh, really, really good. Really, really good for us. All right, we do have double boss bosses here. Stay the course. Try to focus in on the same sort of strategy we've been doing, which is let them shoot my shield while it gives me infinite amounts of energy. Oh, look at them! <laughs> Dang near collide. Oh, we have cruise missiles. Wow. Oh, my goodness, why was I not using the cruise missiles? Might finish them off? One down, one left. I really want to be cheeky and fire a cruise missile without locking on and trying to hit his weak spot. I doubt we'll be able to do it, but we're going to try anyway. Oh, actually, hang on a second. Hang on a second. We are in a tricky spot. We gotta get some space. I wanna be cute, but I gotta focus on not dying. I know, it must be done. Just wanna get that elite out, please. Just let the, make the elite go away. Way, way more than I wanted it to. All right. Ow! Ow! Uh, I think I missed. Oh, I got it! Oh, that foot, that was so awesome. Oh, oh man, hitting the weak spot with a freaking cruise missile. That was dang satisfying. Woo, nice. That, the, oh gosh, that felt good. His, his life just went from all to just nothing. And oh, gosh, that was, that was, Super cool. Yeah, I was I uh, I was really close to the target, Spoot Knight. You're wrong. Uh, Spoot Knight said uh, over on Twitch, he said, uh, you did that at less than 300 meters. I was actually screaming. Um, yeah, so cruise missiles have a pretty stark uh, radius um, whenever they explode. The damage radius is 300 meters. And if you were caught in that, you take all of that damage full force. And if you look at that kinetic damage that's listed on that weapon and that energy damage, and then you look at our shields and our armor, you can understand why being in its range would be a problem. <laughs> quite, quite fast. Now, obviously we do have our hole over here as well to sort of compensate, but that would dang near drain all of our shields and armor in a single hit. Uh, and considering we're half on hole as it is, it could have put us in a terrible spot. That was, uh, whew. That was neat. That was neat. Okay, so, uh, after, after all of that, we need to jump to the next location. Uh, we're gonna need to do another high-risk area, but first, I've got to go to a station. I gotta clear up this absolute atrocious mess of equipment that's flooded my ship. Um... Let's see. I think a good spot's going to be Devena Gas Orbit. I mean, I guess I could also go to Union Border Patrol, but... Yeah, let's go to Devena Gas Orbit. It's fine. Um, I think this is actually a really good time as I'm going to do this and kind of take care of some of the, uh, the item stuff going on that we start answering questions. I know it's a little bit earlier in a normal uh, sense, but um, I have seen a couple of questions let's just let's plow through them so gary let's go ahead and open up those questions and let's champion them excellent yes we've got a few lined up ready for you um so first up we've got pesky husky over on youtube um and he quite diligently noticed that there was a ship viewer option uh on the menu screen um 
could you speak to that? <laughs> yeah, I'll speak to it. That's a very good yeah. point. So I am on a dev branch. I'm using uh, specialized tools to allow me to have much more control over what I'm showcasing during the course of these live streams. Um, and as such, I have tools that will never be made uh, public to the masses. One of those things is in fact the ship viewer. Um, so whenever you see it pop up in my main screen, you're like, oh, that seems really cool. What does that do? Can I have it? Um, the answer is it lets you view ships uh, and no, you can't have it. It was made very exclusively for a particular purpose uh, with the backers actually, uh, when they were designing their ships. Uh, but it is by no means something that we would consider a, uh, a shippable state. And it's not, uh, no, we're, we're putting our emphasis on content that is going to expand the game uh, and bring a lot of joy to you all. Uh, it's ship viewer, ain't it? So, yep. Uh, next question, please. Uh, there we go. Right. One of uh, a few questions regarding the whole UE5 uh, update, etc. This one's from Davinator791 over on Twitch. Uh, now that the code is getting ported to Unreal Engine 5, will we have larger box area, as in uh, our um, systems that we fly in, etc.? Um, where we like the ship area? gets turned around when we hit the limits. Okay. Yeah. Um, so no, there's not any changes uh, coming to the front of viable area. Um, and I can speak to that for a number of reasons. The first reason is if we were to make the space even larger, that just means that we would be making the game more empty because it would be empty space. There wouldn't be anything there. And through that, we would just allow basically enemies or allies or whatever to spawn deeper into that space of nothing. It wouldn't be very good of us to go that direction. If we were to expand the space, then what we would also wanna do is expand that playable area with meaningful content to pursue. Um, as many of you know, we have handcrafted over a hundred locations in this game with intentional spaces and unique locations to explore. And expanding that would mean for us to also design more in that space. So no, just because of a, a migration from one engine to another, absolutely not. Um, but also from a development position of what we would like to do to the game, we also have no plans to expand that radius. We're really happy with the current size that we are providing um, each space. I feel like it's good for exploration and combat uh, as it stands. So. Next question, please. Excellent. And uh, switching back to Pesky Husky again on YouTube. Uh, most planets across the systems in Everspace 2 harbor locations or location challenges. However, he's noticed that there's one planet in the Kate system named Chenat, which is an exception. Can you shed any light on that? Um, oh yeah, sure. Well, so even though we can't go to all of the uh, planets and moons and you know what have you of all the different locations, and this is the example that they're pointing to here. This is Chenat with its various moons, of which I do not know their names. I'd have to pull up the, the data sheets for. Um, we want to make sure that all of these systems have appropriate world building installed, right? So just because we add something to the game doesn't mean it's going to be directly associated with gameplay centric elements. For example, on the map, we want also the map to be filled out with some pretty clever looking things, okay? And through these clever looking things, these clever looking details, um, it's very important for us uh, to make these spaces um, have a story to tell, okay? Everything in this world doesn't exist for you to interact with, but rather there is a specific story you are following to navigate through specific locations. There are many locations, don't get me wrong. There are many, many locations here, but there are also a lot of locations that exist because of that overarching world, the overarching stories that are being shared um, many other things uh, at play. Um, and uh, yeah, so we are absolutely gonna have locations that you can see, but can't touch. Uh, there's gonna be characters that you can learn about, but we'll never engage with, um, et cetera, et cetera. This is very normal. I, I hope many of you recognize that, but that's this is just one of those cases where you can't do anything uh, with this planet. Good question. Excellent. Right. Um, 
I'm going to try and wrap two questions into one here nice. because we've got a couple of questions. One from Slorene and one from Wizard Jerry over on YouTube. Uh, right. Now, Slorene's asking, uh, what about Unreal Engine 4 uh, made long-term support more difficult? And then as a follow-up to that, um, Wizard Jerry's asking, as the main purpose of upgrading to Unreal 5 is to make better future support, does this mean that we can expect more content or DLC in the future? Uh, so I love both of these questions, and yeah, I'm glad you wrapped them into one. Um, the short of it is that Unreal Engine 4's support is kind of getting, you know, more or less cut off because it's now seen as a completed uh, engine, and Unreal Engine 5 is now the go-to place if you want to have full-time Epic support, okay? So not to say that they wouldn't help out a fellow developer in need using their prior engines, but the main line support is Unreal Engine 5. And if we are producing a title in Unreal Engine 5, it means we are going to get support the fastest and it's gonna be steady, it's gonna be consistent, it's gonna be exactly what our team needs and it's gonna be best for you guys. So for us, it was kind of a no brainer decision in order to do this migration process going from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5 for that support, okay? That is, that is the mainline reason. We've said it once, we've said it a thousand times. Uh, but that is uh, what that looks like through and through. Um, so the second part of that question, um, I want you to read it off one more time so I can... Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, Wizard Jerry's just, as the main purpose of upgrading to Unreal Engine 5 is for better future support, does this mean we can expect more content or DLC in the future? So regarding the DLC content expansion, free, whatever, whatever those elements look like for Everspace 2, um, you'll get that from us. It has less to do with like, you know, the engine itself. Um, but of course, in order to keep producing for the game and to have that rich support, it makes sense to be on the uh, modern engine. So you could say that there's an association there. Um, and you guys know, I mean, this is no surprise. I mean, we've got a free content update um, scheduled for this spring, actually, um, as well as a premium DLC in the works, uh, which we have not said a specific date yet. Um, or even technically not even a year. Um, if you even look at our uh, announcements, like on Discord, for example, it says TBD 2024, 2025 um, for what that future um, uh, premium content could actually be dropped. Um, and yeah, we want to keep making content for Everspace too. And in order to make sure that all of our engine settings and systems are in place appropriately, um, as well as being able to get assistance if any hiccups do occur. Unreal Engine 5, proper direction in order to obtain assistance, all of that fun stuff. Um, just to kind of also wrap this into another um, question that might be looming out there. We have answered it before, but you know, it's totally good. Um, we are not necessarily going into, actually we're not, we're not going into Unreal Engine 5 specifically to jump into all these magical new experimental features and advanced technologies and stuff like that. That that was not the drive. Um, should there be opportunities with that, we might investigate, but there should be no ex expectation whatsoever coming from you guys that we are going to take that dive. Because again, the migration is focused on support. That is the main goal. That is the big kahuna, if you will. So, yeah. So please keep that understood whenever you are uh, moving through the process of uh, what's going to happen next for Everspace 2. Good stuff. Good question. Uh, I, I really do appreciate those. So what else we got? Uh, right. Uh, I'm going to try and wrap uh, a couple of questions up again. Uh, one from Am Shadar over on YouTube and I am the Law 42 on Twitch. Uh, now, I am the Law 42 on Twitch is just asking about the Unreal Engine 5 update. Would it be coming as a kind of a standalone patch or would it come wrapped with the, uh, uh, the free update whenever that drops? Um, but Am Shadar is asking a similar question. Uh, they've just finished the game uh, and they've oh, loved nice. it. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, and they've really enjoyed the gameplay, but they're wondering if there's any future content planned. Uh, so I was wondering if you could speak to, uh, you know, our plans for the future. And how yes, would I will they give would you be... all of our secrets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, as, as I just mentioned answering the last question, yeah, we have a free content update scheduled this spring, um, and it's set to expand upon the in-game formula in uh, 
and what that looks like. We haven't expanded on too much, but we did have a little teaser at the end of last year of what a potential incursion, it's because this free content update is called incursions, um, what that might look like, um, kind of give you a sense of maybe what's around the corner. Um, in addition to um, adding a slew of new legendaries, and when I say a slew, maybe I shouldn't call it a slew. That actually sounds like a small number. I've said too much. Uh, we are we are adding more content, um, completely for free, uh, to help maximize your enjoyment factor, to promote new opportunities, just the fun factor in general, right? Uh, and it does have a focus at that mid to late game uh, territory. A lot of it's really the late game stuff. So um, yeah, the premium DLC that's, you know, who knows when it's gonna come out. We have absolutely no idea. <clears throat> uh, but we are opening up the doors into new side missions. So you're gonna be exploring uh, not only new uh, challenges across the known systems, but maybe there could be a territories galore to discover elsewhere with new characters to meet uh, and new events to unfold. There are two big things surrounding the um, the future for Everspace 2. We've talked about what's called a Leviathan, which is basically a giant space whale, as well as the Dreadnought, which is this massive uh, space station, which is also um, a, like a, it's a flying fortress sort of thing. Um, not a lot more information has come out on either one of those things, but we have mentioned that they are things that we want to accomplish, things that we want to uh, put into the game. So you definitely have that looking forward to our future. More information about those things will be expanded upon when we get there. So, yeah. <laughs> cool. Good, good questions. Love it. Yep. You agree to fly on, pilot. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Those were some solid questions. I really appreciate that, everybody. And now you have to, the grueling task to wait for me to freaking uh, get done with all of this. Oh, we got a redemption item. Ooh, maybe we should hang on to that. That's not a bad idea. That asteroids can be... We got two. This is very tempting, honestly. Uh, granted, our Goss Cannon is just... It's a powerful... That explains... It's two levels higher. That's That's doing some serious work for us um but you know if we're fighting enemies that are higher level than our own this blue rare prototype it would actually be doing more damage because that 30 percent increased damage mm, ah, that's a that's a really tricky choice uh you know why not let's just let's just make it happen uh autonomous repair bay nope Checking out a couple more items before... Oh, I do love that one, but we're going to sell it. Opulence. Ooh, also not bad. We're going to dismantle this in hopes to getting one step closer to that blueprint. Same with this. Cool. We're going to just hang on to these bad boys for now. Probably should just put it in the base, but I keep forgetting to do that. And we'll sell this earth line because... We don't need it. All right, we're going to hang on to this just because sometimes I'm indecisive. But otherwise, I, I seriously did not realize I had two Zarkov signal decoders. But we're going to activate this one too. This is a lower level one. This one actually shouldn't be too hard. Um, oh man, I think I just cursed it because I said that. But we're going to try and complete this one as well. We're going to sell these seeds too. They don't sell for a crazy amount. Uh, but uh, it's fine. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So now we need to find that high risk area, and make our way towards it. <coughs> My mic picked up more of that than I would have liked. Sorry about that. Excuse me. All right, another high risk area. Things are coming together. I like it. Oh, come on, you did the previous one with ease and with some flair too. I mean, okay, that cruise missile was absolutely a highlight. And if we, we don't have something to, to capitalize on, like if none of you clipped that and are sharing it in the Discord or in your socials, there's something wrong. Cause that was seriously cool. Seriously cool. Show people the game, that, that would definitely be a highlight. 
But, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe you're not wrong. But regardless... I mean, yeah, so far this is not looking like it's too rough. But a lot can change in a matter of seconds in this game, as I'm sure that you know. I do feel pretty well, pretty strongly outfitted because we have these legendaries that we collected uh, through Nightmare Difficulty. It's the only reason why we were able to grab them. Uh, one of them we did catch through a side mission, I believe. There are three legendaries associated with side missions, for those unaware. I'm looking for a juicy target for my ult, but this, this is fine. Yeah, I honestly don't know what I was thinking. This is fine. <laughs> Jeez, this thing is just melting them. And these guys are too low a level. Oh my gosh, yeah. Look at us just plow through this. Now, if we got a new signal decoder and I was doing something at level 23, this might this might look a little bit different. We are this is kind of a steamroll uh, situation here. And every now and then, it kind of feels good. Like, hey, look, I I earned this. I put in the work. I put together this build. It's coming together well. I'm happy with that. It feels good. Almost, almost. Here we go. So many drones. Damn. For anybody who's wondering why there's constantly like a yellow target, um, that is one of the mutators in this high risk area. It's called evolution. And that yellow target slowly increases its level up to five um, every, I think, like 10 seconds or something. It will increase. Can prove problematic, but uh, I'm kind of tackling them before they become problematic. So. All right. Only wishing I had the uh, reverse uh, front shield generator. Everyone shooting me from behind there. But... I think we can do this again. Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh! Gosh, that is, that's like my new favorite thing. I'm not even joking. Gosh, that is so stinking satisfying. Oh! Nice. And we got the overcharge catalyst. That one, that one can be nice. That one can be good. Let's grab the shipwreck. All right. So let's uh, let's check out what else we have to accomplish here. Zarkov. Okay, so now it says the three location challenges, but uh, we it says two out of three, and yet um, the check mark is the location challenges, right? I'm not going crazy, right, Gary? That the, that's the location. You're just challenge. going crazy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Um, but yeah, there's definitely more than uh, three that have been checked off. So I think. Uh, oh. Here we are. Of course, there's not a check mark over there. And there's not a check mark here. Why did I not? I'm not using my eyes. In fact, we've done such great work with our UI so that you wouldn't get confused on that front. Here I am being confused. Uh, so let's actually just talk about that briefly so that you guys don't suffer uh, from the same amount of confusion that I do. Whenever you see a full dot, it is a mainline location. Generally, there is a station, um, a large asteroid, something of great prominence there, um, and also usually a base um, for station, resupply, etc., etc. Also, usually a place where you can get quests, not always. 
versus these little sites where it's just a little dot inside of the uh, the square. I should call it a diamond, I guess, because it's rotated, whatever. You guys understand geometry. Um, that little dot means the specific location challenge has not been completed yet. Versus when you have this check mark. Oh my gosh, look at your beautiful nails. Everybody, I wanna show you. Mercy, come here. Mercy, Mercy, come here. Real quick. My daughter barged in, she got her nails painted. I want everyone to see this. Come here. Because what's gonna happen is, let's like, let's look at this. Look at these beautiful nails that the green screen should make uh, look really funny. Look at that. Look, everybody. Is that amazing? Did mommy do that for you? That is awesome. Are you really excited and you wanna tell daddy about it? Oh, that's so good. Do you wanna say anything to everybody watching? Mommy. Mommy, okay, perfect. All right, well, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate that. All right. Have a good one. Shut the door on your way out, please. Awesome. <clears throat> so the check mark uh, represents having completed that challenge. That's what that means. So dot means challenge has not been completed. You can go there and do something. Check mark means you don't have to go back there to do a location challenge. That is different from the percentage you see in the upper right corner of it. The percentage, that 25%, means there are secrets to explore in that location. That's different from the location challenge of which the check mark says is done. Okay, so there, that's the two. That's the two differences there. The dot on the left, if you will, represents the location challenge. Every single location that is not like a mainline location has a location challenge. In some cases, even the mainline locations have location challenges. Um, and every location also has a percentage of secrets that you have to go find. Uh, and yeah, two different things. Cool. Let's let's head over to the Ogni mining fields. I think that's going to be a, a solid location to complete. Jimmy Jones writes this down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Let's just take a quick look at the vessel and make sure everything's okay. Oh yeah, that's totally fine. It's fine. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It's totally good. Who needs paint? Am I right? It's, this is, this is fine. Woo! Ah. Yeah. Nice. I'll have to take you up on that. Can't leave the area with a damaged ship. Are you sure you can trust them? <laughs> Goodness. All right, let's go ahead and uh, bring this power core back. One of these slots I feel like has the detonator that we need. I can't remember uh, which one. Oh, we haven't completed this side mission here. Great. Great. Uh, yeah, there it is. The explosive charge that we were looking for. Nice. There is a bit to do in this location, so we're gonna be running around a bit. But uh, it's also a good time to point out, as I always do, how these locations are handcrafted. And because of that, we were very intentional with the level design. So whenever you see something like these, you know, little crystals, for example, it tells you, oh, hey, if you want resources, probably go there. There's a good chance you're gonna find what you're looking for. And conversely, if you're looking to try and uh, find things associated with a particular quest line, You'll want to find something a little bit more um, bulky, like that station over here, which I believe this is the same thing that we went through. No, this is different. Something like this, which says, oh, hey, you know what? There's something going on here. Maybe you should investigate, which would help you complete the location challenge. Like that. What do you know? Intentional design. It's nice. It's fun. Stuff doesn't just randomly generate and it could take you like years to discover it maybe or it's just like not accessible at all. Well, we, we, we fixed that. Fixed that a bit. So. Go ahead and lock this one in place. I don't th think this one has an explode. Uh, I knew it. Perfect. <clears throat> just like I thought. We are going to dock and fix up our ship, though. I'm sure somebody's kind of uh, freaking out about how much smoke is leaving our vessel. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll buff out those scratches. It shouldn't take long until the machines repair your ship. Oh, did we just trigger the side mission? I'm Aaron. Hey, Aaron. I'm That's fine. This is fine. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we have to find and assemble all the parts. This, it's far, we're completing stuff. It's this is this is exactly what's necessary. Um, oh yes, we can finally complete this. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> what I just did here is I removed all startup delays when not in combat. So anytime that we are out uh, outside of combat, if I'm reorganizing anything on my ship, I'm not gonna have to wait some uh, period of time, which is 15 seconds, uh, for it to become usable. Now it's just immediately usable. Neat. Before we can activate the antenna, it so. needs to be set up again. The replacement modules are already prepared. I guess we don't have to move this over quite yet. Let's keep exploring. Let's keep grabbing the other stuff in the area. I'm on it. Vingram, you will keep watch for Matias' drones and handle defenses in case he decides to attack the station instead of the antenna. Got it. Hecla and I are standing ready to initiate communications with HQ as soon as the Oops. Okay, wiring goes here. Wiring goes here. Wiring goes here. Wiring goes here. Meat! Almost like that was by design. Intentional design! Absolutely. All right. Then we just have one left. Oh my gosh! Feels good. Oops. Right, we just have one left. I can't remember where it's at. But let me also get some of these contents first. 
feel like there was also a, uh, yeah, I can, I can do this. I heard it, but I don't, ah, oh, shield generator. Yes, I like how they're like, hey, we need to do this thing and we need you to protect us. And I'm like, okay, first let me destroy your shield generator. Why, why would you do that? I need loot, that's ultimately, that's what we're, that's what we're going for here, sorry. My looting is more important than your safety. Deal with it. Uh, let's see. Already been around here. We went through there. We should probably. Um, oh, I changed. I changed the button for dropping markers. Gosh darn it. Hang on. Let me. Let me do a thing. Let me. Let me. I forgot the. Uh, is it? No, it's not targeting. Is it equipment? Dropping a, no, miscellaneous maybe? Place marker, there it is. Uh, so I want to, oops. Bumping all the things. There we go. Also, why aren't our headlights on? And uh, inertia dampeners, why? I think I forgot to, no, 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 no. I think I forgot to uh, save my settings after I had a particular play session the other day. Whoops, there's, it's fine. Okay, that's nice. So, uh, we've already explored over here, so we don't need to come over here. Excuse me. Suddenly wish I had the, um, uh, magnetic repulsor. That would be fun to just throw into that asteroid right behind him. Shouldn't be wasting my time on them. Uh, let's come over here and open some of these up for fun. Cool. I think it's here. I don't think we've been over here yet. So I'm just going to remove that other, other thing. Because uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, there you are. Now we just have to figure out how to enable it. We must look around and use our brain. Aha! Uh -huh. Exploration wins the day. brief second I didn't see the explosive charge and I thought wait it's somewhere else <laughs> everything's fine we're all good all four of them bonk all right so now we just have to trigger them all wow that gave us a really long timer normally the timers are reduced uh depending on the difficulty that you're playing on wait a second okay no I am playing on nightmare okay <laughs> for a brief second I thought that I wasn't. Wait, five? Well, that must mean there was one that was already here. Okay. No biggie. Beautiful. Completed the location. Should also complete the, uh, the challenge, the Zarkov challenge. Excellent. Now all we need to do is fly really close to the sun. That won't be too shabby. Whoops. I was trying to be cheeky there, uh, trying to destroy the enemy from four kilometers of range. Let's see if I can still be cheeky about it. Nope, did not do enough damage. trying to cheese this instead of use a rail gun like it's uh like you're meant to do oh well all right you can also accomplish it through like dropping mines and scattering away and stuff like that like it's it's not just a rail gun but uh i digress let's collect this loot and uh fix this uh burned bridge
Oh, whoops, wrong piece. Is it this one first? I think it's this one first. There we go. Kind of looked over at chat and I uh, see somebody uh, on YouTube uh, ask the question. I do wonder if he ever fully finished the game. Um, several times, actually, in different states. Um, and that's kind of to my detriment in some ways because I remember the old states, but not the new states. And so I'll try to complete it in the way that I remember it, how it was, instead of what it's supposed to be. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a, such a strange uh, conundrum to have. But, uh, yeah, rest assured, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're getting there, don't worry. <laughs> I suppose we could start answering some questions instead of just watching me assemble, uh, this, uh, uh. I think we're going to be quite happy to, uh, to watch you play, to be fair, because I haven't got a single question for oh you. Oh my gosh, no questions? Let's no, this they're all is... astounded by your beautiful face and your stylish gameplay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This goes here. There we go. And this, I thought this last one went right in the middle. Why, am, why is it not doing the thing I thought it was supposed to do? Maybe it goes on the front? Maybe it goes on the back? I'm looking for a missing part. I'm not seeing it. Where is it? Where is it at? Where is it at? Is it right in front of me? Is that what's going on? Is it on the top? Ah, it's on the top, the top. On the top. Okay, be prepared. As soon as you activate the panel, they'll send in his minion drones. Yeah, that's fine. Just bring it. Cool. I look over at chats again and I see backseat in the devs is such a fun experience. I know, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> We do have a question that's just oh. come in from yeah, JR Panciotti over on YouTube. And he wants to know, what is your favorite equipment set? Ooh, oh man, that's that's a really good question, honestly. Um, oh, oh shoot. Um, <clears throat> silly me, ran out of energy. Um, my favorite equipment set, that is that is a really good question. Um, you know, I think it's always easy to kind of like go towards the just high damage alone sets, um, of which case there's actually several. Um, but I have found a surprising amount of enjoyment in the, um, oh, that's gonna, that's totally good. Um, the, whoa, whoa, whoa. One hit, is that really all it takes? Oh, maybe that's it on Nightmare. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whoops. I count as a death or just are we just putting that on the I, I would count that as a death. I would count that as a death. Okay. You know, it's it's kind of funny because I don't think I've ever actually failed this mission in playtesting. Uh, so, whoops. I didn't know it was only one hit in Nightmare. Maybe it's one hit in the, just the normal game. How dare I? Oh, yeah, sticky turrets would make sense. But I don't have any. Okay, no. Don't worry about the fact that I could craft them. I'm not going to. <laughs> Let's make it harder than it needs to be. More satisfaction. All right, I'm not dodging the question. Uh, favorite set, um, I really do like the rogue set. Um, the maneuverability of it is just awesome. I really like the rogue set because of that maneuverability. Um, if you don't know what the rogue set is, it's a two, two piece bonus. Um, and it's was intentionally, well, I, I shouldn't say intentionally, but Originally, it was designed to kind of help um, make light ships just really incredible. But turns out it's strong on uh, any ship. Um, and it kind of even works a little bit better on um, heavy ships and medium ships because it makes them move a bit more like light ships. Oh, no! Blah. 
but yeah, Rogue Sets, <laughs> one of my favorites. Um, you know, it's hard to use correctly, I'll say, um, but there's a lot of satisfaction out of the Storm Chaser set. Um, it's, uh, it's the set that whenever you collect energy orbs, uh, well, you, it allows you to collect energy orbs from longer distance. So I like that, especially if you were to pair that with something like the Sentinel with the uh, passives that I have, it goes really, really well together. Um, but it also takes all of your um, retaliation damage, your thorns damage, if you will, and applies it to all enemies in a short area. Like I think it's 800 meters or something. So if you can stack that correctly with the retaliation perk, for example, um, you it can dish out some serious damage provided you can take the damage. Um, and again, the Sentinel, if you're really beefing up your shield, it's kind of hilarious because uh, you can just fly around, collect energy orbs, get that invulnerability shield that lasts for like a brief second. Enemies will shoot you in that time period and just damage themselves and explode and drop energy orbs, which you can collect to give you invulnerability shields. And it just recycles in itself. So you just like fly around and just watch everything else just die around you. Now they don't die super fast, but uh, regardless, it's still really satisfying when you do get it to work together. I like I like those kinds of setups where you, um, you have to work for, uh, what's like the out the you have to work for you have to work for it that's that's all i'm trying to say so instead of it being like oh i really like this item because it gives you 50 bajillion attack points no like i i like the stuff that's like if you do this then that happens where putting in that like it's so much more satisfying to me um so that's kind of the style of of, of what i kind of choose that dictates my uh, direction and how I'm approaching situations. I do need a better weapon than an uh, Eradicator. I might just swap over to the powerful Gauss Cannon because um, it was definitely doing the work. And we might as well use... We might as well use... Um, yeah, we're going to keep the Calibrated Judge as well. That might... That should be able to pump out some serious damage. I'm also going to keep in mind that I have an Ultimate and Mines. That should assist us as well. Yeah. Did we have another question? Was that the kind of uh, the last one? Yeah, that was it. Whoops. Um, yeah, people are just going through the different sets there, like the Diff Boxes, you know, like the Opulence set. So oh, yeah. I, I quite like that as well, yeah. I quite like that. Yeah, we're going to have to get Ultimate Mines as well. That's good. Yeah, I definitely want to hear about your guys' favorite sets and whatnot. That's definitely cool. get this charged up because there's going to be another guy that spawns like right behind us in just a moment. That was too close for comfort. Oh no! Oh no! Woo! Oh no! I did hit! Oh! <laughs> All right, this is the last time I'm trying this darn mission. If I fail it, I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, get my engine color like I wanted to do. Ah, I was, that was I'm surprised that was close enough. But all right, all right. Who designed this game? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, oh, it sa it saved my swapping around. Okay. Hmm. Do I have any sticky turrets to make things actually probably more effective? Um, we have a rascal. We don't want to pull it towards... Oh, no, that's not what this does. Um, do you have any other... Actually, rascal... Let's let's do the rascal. Here we go. Let's do this. Have some mines, have some missiles. Did we, did we start it already? Gonna say that's a borked save. We're gonna try to reload the location there. Uh, wonky stuff can happen because I am on a dev branch. So if you're seeing something wonky happen, uh, don't quickly associate it with the game itself being bugged. Um, very realistically, it could be something that we did on our end. So yeah, I've got a broken save there. Let me just reload one back. The process of migrating from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5, just because this is kind of coming up, has definitely proved to be um, unique 
and how much it reveals of what's kind of like under the hood we've found so many details that uh we realized could be implemented just a little bit better you know little optimizations here and there um and maybe maybe if we are fortunate we will see those results um after the migration but that's not what we're counting on of course um the mainline elements of course as i've mentioned a bajillion times is that we are uh pushing to um <clears throat> support the game as it grows All right. Okay. Missiles, man. Who'd have thought they'd be super effective? <laughs> All right. Could have gone with a rail gun. Intercepted. Nope, 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 nope. You're the one who screwed me over last time. Get out of here. All right. We're in the clear. Noise. All right. Let's top this location off. Finish off the side mission and go collect our Hope new engine color. Back there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think that's one of those situations with that mission specifically where your build might not work and you might have to look at some other aspect to get through it you know uh, that's whether craft it or anything like that a really good point honestly like my build was well suited for like high risk areas which of course i was doing wonderfully well uh but yeah in that moment it was a little bit too, too close for comfort and i needed to make some tweaks getting those missiles really helped as well as the greater damage output from the weapons too um that's a really good point though yeah there's not really Actually, I imagine there might be one person in the chat who would say otherwise, but it's really hard to say there's one build that can just do everything. Um, but, uh, yeah. I'm happy with how we've built ourselves up, though. Things are looking to be a bit easier and clearer for what's coming together. All right. So with that being said, we have 100% completed and gotten the location challenge. We need to fly close to the sun and Zarkov to collect our Zarkov Explorer. Um, and then for advanced combat, we want to kill an enemy at distance. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do both of those things. This is also gonna help travel in super light uh, faster as well. So that's gonna be a huge bonus. Uh, Golden Holland was just asking a question over on YouTube. Um, with regards to planetary locations, will there ever be any kind of day night cycle or possible weather patterns? Or is that just not something that we'll introduce into the game? That sounds super cool, but it's not something we will be doing to the game. Um, what you are asking for on that front um, is to have an authentic interaction between the celestial objects inside of the game and how they're interacting even on the world map like how like because as it stands for example like when you're looking at a solar system planets don't just stay where they're at in real life we did this intentionally to have those handcrafted locations that you can venture towards without an unsettling degree of random chance for something like the environment to uh, to be a, a, another factor in. Um, and so as such, like if we were to put in moving planets that spun at the very least for a day-night cycle, we're talking about a complete 
restructuring of how we've designed the game at this point, right? So I'm giving you this context because I don't want to just say, no, we're not going to do that because that almost sounds like, oh yeah, no, it's, that would be super easy, but no. Uh, it, it's actually, you're asking for a pretty stark technical um, re-evaluation of the groundwork established in Everspace 2. So, and again, don't get me wrong, that does sound really cool. That's just not how we built the game. And uh, it's, it's not gonna happen. So all the planets in the game are tidally locked, I guess. Interesting. I suppose you could look at it that way. time passes, right? That would be a crude summarization of time dilation while nearing light speed. Yes. So. I guess I should mention, um, <clears throat> this is a little bit, a little bit of a, I'm not going to call it spoiler, um, but, uh, you know, there was a chance for a couple little things to show up during the course of the stream. And what you're getting is a text to speech placeholder uh, of an exchange between Adam and Hive that normally uh, you would not see. So I am going to cancel it uh, because, uh, yeah, it's not ready yet. But for anybody wondering, if you uh, if you do like the conversations that happen in uh, inside of Everspace 2, uh, because we are making new content and new material, uh, that might not be limited to also conversations that can generate in your gameplay session as well. More information on that in the future. All right, let's tackle this. Woo! Yeah, these guys aren't just melting for me. They're actually uh, at our level, so that makes sense. I mean, I guess they're still kind of melting, but I digress. And now we're melting, all right. Yeah, I actually appreciate it, Alec. Come help me distract them at the very least. Appreciate it. Nice. Excellent. Man, do you guys remember the first time we did one of these unknown signal traps? Okay. Were you guys here for that? It's like friggin' six months ago or something. And we just got absolutely savage. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> I like how to go in and try it like four or five times. Jeez. We have come so far, haven't we? All right. So, I'm going to collect this shipwreck. Um, oh, we... I guess we didn't collect that because we reloaded to save. That's right. Uh, my next plan is to... get a kill at long range to unlock another uh, engine color. We have a lot of different ways that we could go about that. Um, I think... Let's just go to Union Border Patrol. Now we can fast forward, save some time. Look over at the chat, you guys. take out more than one mine at a time that would be drone at a time excuse me oh we're using the wrong weapon what am i doing who's, who's flying this thing what in the world
done. Barely activated that. Um... Oh, I do like the destabilized damage of what we currently have, but yeah, we're 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 scrapping this. We're not getting out of that. Um, what was I saying? I can't remember. Guess it wasn't important. <laughs> we're gonna go see the Flying Duchess now. credits to assist in any purchases we make, which is always a good. Looking for a railgun. If we don't find one, I will craft one, but hopefully I don't have to spend my crafting ingredients. All right. Chop! No railgun. Nope, not nah, that. There's no railgun there. But what we do have is the opportunity to sell stuff, make some more space, however things coming together. Um, we are going to go ahead and start selling our commodities that are even orange um, for two reasons. Because I'm a little bit uh, lazy and it saves more time for the stream to focus in on things that we want. Um, but also because it's not bad. It's, it's, not, it's not the most horrendous thing in the world. Oh, there's a rattler! Oh, we're gonna use it. We're we're using the rattler. All right. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I wish we could actually find a, a rascal that was a little bit better, but it's it's not bad. I'm I'm very pleased that we just got like one of my favorite sets in the game, honestly. It's just it's just nice. It's just a nice set. There's kind of like I am finding some really good weapons though to boot. Um Yeah. All right, we are going to sell for cash monies. Um Let's do this and then dismantle Do we care about resource range? That's the question. I do kind of. I think I would rather have peruser than observer. I think I think I care. What do you think, Gary? Do I care? You never care. I oh, never. That's a lie. You care greatly. <gasps> She's absolutely <laughs> savage. All right. <laughs> cool. We're gonna go with that. Um, and, uh, we're going to craft a rail gun. I wonder if there's a scout that could just be kind of fun to, to bind this to. Eh, are we ready to change ships? I mean, it's been a while since we changed the ship, but only because it's been a while since I streamed because I was sick. Pfft, why did I choose to be sick? That was a dumb decision. Um, uh, we might, ch we'll, we'll change ships next time. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to craft a, a rail gun of which we do not have our superior unlocked. Which one's the railgun? There you are. Um, and we'll have a means to make this even further range because uh, this is only, it's not gonna quite be far enough. Uh, but yeah, we, are, we want that. And then what we want to do is we want to associate the, um, the what's it called to it? Uh, the, the one that increases range. I can't remember which one it is. I know there's one in here. Do we do we not have it unlocked? Well, that stinks. We don't have it unlocked yet. That's going to make it really hard to get the kill without being in a scout. <clears throat> Ugh, okay. Blueprint!
Now I know that you guys probably uh, probably can't tell, but uh, I want to I want to talk about this rattler for just a brief moment. Um, it says so long as no friendlies or neutrals are within two kilometers, gain ten percent increased damage, handling, and ship speed. This thing is like immediately noticeable. Oh, well, I lost it. <clears throat> but it is immediately noticeable when it's working. Your ship, it just, seriously, it, it takes your ship from, it can maneuver okay, to, all right, this feels good. There's so many GMB folks here, the rogue bonus is not going to apply. So we're going to jump away, find somewhere else where we can truly be lonesome. The lone wolf, if you will, that's said in the chat. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a couple more location. I thought there was another look. Oh yeah, the gas field. We haven't done rips in space. Oh my gosh. But I think there's also the, the race that we can do. And now that we have more maneuverability, this is the best time to do it. We need more dark energy. Ah, we need one more dark energy. Ah, maybe we should go fight some redeemers really quick. Jeez. That's unfortunate. Uh, otherwise, let's do the race. It's about lunchtime. Y'all have a great day. Well, thanks for coming by, DC's Bees. Really do appreciate it. You had some healthy discussion in chat. Some good questions and good uh, chatter. So thank you for swinging by. Really appreciate it. Uh, oh, we've already... We've completed this one? Wait a second. Wait a second. What's the location challenge that we haven't completed? Surely it's not to create the spatial bypass. I thought it was the... I thought it was the race. Now I'm confused. Everything is a lie. But while we're here, let's just destroy some stuff. I don't know if we actually explored underneath the clouds. Maybe that's what I need to do. Uh, where are those lights at? I know that Tony added lights. There you are. Actually, I don't specifically know if it was Tony, but <clears throat> I digress. Here we go. Oh, further. Deeper. Just keep going. Found a shipwreck. Beautiful. Is it here? Is this what we're looking for? think this is right this is right yeah because yeah okay neat intentional level design <laughs> just gonna keep pounding that one out <laughs> all right now let's just blast off in an unknown direction to get out of this okay good good all right there's still more secrets to be had here but uh, I can't remember the location challenge, so I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to... Oh, you know what? I don't know if I've done the gas harvester. Maybe that's what it is. Is that what we changed it to? Is that right, Gary? Give me the answers. Yes. I have no idea. <laughs> nice. So just, just a point of clarity, real quick. Um, so I have been uh, uh, a part of the Rockfish team for over, I mean, technically over six years, but I was only part-time for, I've been full-time for, I think it's close to five years, if not a little over five years now. It's been a while. Uh, and and Gary recently joined the team. So when, when he's kind of saying that, oh, I, I don't actually know the answer to that, he's got a very powerful excuse since he's only <laughs> more of a recent member, okay? I have no excuse. I should probably know. Um, so yeah, 
that's a, a little yeah. bit of why he's being a cheeky on that. Yeah, Eric, crap. He's, he's terrible. <laughs> he doesn't know anything. You know, he needs to up his game. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see if we can up our game. Oh my goodness. Let's see if we can uh, do this any justice. What? What? Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right well we have to get every single one of these no big deal okay that was that was that was horrendous uh yeah we're just gonna <clears throat> we're just gonna fly away and cry a little bit inside no big deal that was terrible <laughs> <laughs> ain't proven <laughs> oh my gosh oh it's so it was so bad i like how the like earlier in the stream i pull off this super epic shot of a cruise missile without guidance to hit the weak point of an outlaw destroyer and it was chef's kiss and then here my derpasaurus instincts come in play and i don't even freaking know how to push a button to make a, a line line up with a glowing bar Woo! the joys <laughs> of gaming let me tell you what there's no crying in ever space those brigs okay all right <laughs> all right have we formulated any new uh questions by this point I'm uh, i've got a couple for you <laughs> if uh, if you want to distract everyone from your poor ability there yes, yes um, i greatly appreciate in. that uh... <laughs> <laughs> i've got a question from youtube from uh, a user called ad welcome right. to the stream uh can high risk locations drop the same legendaries you get from rifts do they have a chance? Technically, they have a chance. In nightmare mode, in nightmare difficulty, excuse me, it's not a mode, it's a difficulty. In nightmare difficulty, they do have a chance. It is a small chance, it is unlikely, but it's possible. Good question. Uh, and sticking with uh, YouTube for the second question, uh, Amshadar wants to know, will we be ever be able to craft set items uh, for like equipment, etc., or is it only available kind of through improvisation? Very RNG. It's something that we wanted to have as improvising so that if you wanted to get really, really specific in a late game format to optimize your build, you would have to try multiple times. Like there would be a, an associated grind with accomplishing such a task. Um, we intentionally designed the game like that um, so that you can't just get exactly what you want whenever you want. Um, it's something you have to put in the work for. And if you commit to the, uh, the resources, if you commit to the crafting, you'll find that you have plenty to do that and make those attempts to get exactly what you want through random chance. Um, you'll also have opportunities, of course, to find it in a station and purchase it that way. Um, and then, of course, also going through rifts, high-risk areas, unknown signals like this, you're always going to have that chance as well to find uh, that next great thing that you're looking for as well. So, um, so yeah, it is very much intended that you cannot craft exactly what you're looking for. Um, but, of course, we have expanded on that. You know, we do, we've added... Uh, the modify feature that allows you to do a lot more uh, with what you do have to make certain things you find even better. You know, we could talk about catalysts all day, right? So, yeah. So, uh, I like that question. It's a clever question. Good question. Peaks. Uh, yeah, that's it. I've got the nail. Okie dokie. Neat. Do we find everything here? Is this, uh, yeah, we did. All right, let's just go back to Union. Ah, all right, fine. I'll fight you, punks. Actually, I have an idea. That's funny. You leave a mine behind as a little present. <laughs> I shot the cruise missile and then got away from it so the anti-missile drone <laughs> would explode it and it would explode itself. Uh, that was beautiful. 
That was beautiful. Cheekily getting around the instructions. But uh, I think the easiest way for, uh, this is kind of, I guess a pro tip if you will. The easiest way to get that um, challenge completed to destroy an anti-drone missile with a missile is actually to use an EMP on it first and then shoot a missile at it because it can't do anything with EMP. That's honestly the easiest way. Uh, but you know, I had, to add, I had to add some flair. We don't want to make things too easy. I mean, if you're not having fun in a game, what are you doing? I like to challenge myself beyond the challenge. It's great. I say all of this and I can't freaking even unlock a gas harvester. <laughs> ah, self-wrecked. All right, let's head back to Union. Oh, jeez. I've got a question for you, if yeah. you want. Yeah. Uh, Raccoon uh, 1008 over on YouTube would like to know, are there any plans on adding more warfare struck support devices to the game? Like, like the little nodes on stations, like turrets and fuel tanks and stuff like that. Is that, is that the? No, things like your EMP and stuff like that, uh, that you can have on your ship. Oh, devices. Yes. Goodness, I thought I thought the question was regard. Sorry, goodness, I'm not sure how I I jumbled that together. <laughs> but um, in regards to devices, I mean, look, devices are something that we really enjoy. Um, uh, I think a, a number of you from early access probably even kind of know the answer um, to this, because we initially had like a lot of different images uh, for different devices that we were like exploring and figuring out. Um, we ended up taking a lot of ideas from the development phase of, of devices and incorporating them into the itemization so that your items actually have a bit more uh, value based on uh, your, your build. And it's not just because, oh, I'm using this specific device. No, we, want, we want, actually wanted the devices to have a little bit more of a general role, uh, but then can be heightened through other means. Wow, thank you. Um, while um, while the mainline shining aspects are the weapon, the modules, the uh, the skill that you have, the ship, of course, um, and how that's all coming together. So, could there be more devices in the future? An absolute direct response to that is, I mean, sure. Will there be more devices in the future? I'll let you know when we know. Right now, our big focus is going to be on legendaries, the incursions themselves, some new ship parts, meaning the modular parts, and then of course, the Leviathan and the Dreadnought. There's more to it than just that. And when we are able to show and talk and tease and have all of those fun little assortment of things, you know I'm going to. All right. <clears throat> All righty. Let's keep moving on. Well, that's a fun little, uh, that's a fun little detail. I think we saw that in a teaser at the end of the year. I have to avoid that, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Let's go up to Prescott, where I think we're going to uh, call it a day. Hey. <coughs> nap, 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 nap. And from here, we are going to go into our little segment at the end of the streams where we will answer more questions should they formulate, as well as highlight you guys. We got some uh, screenshots to share that have been building up from the last couple of weeks. Um, I generally grab them from the Discord, but there's also some incredible ones that do get shared across other forms of, of social media. And if that's you, uh, cool, very awesome. We love to highlight your work. We love that you love our game because you help us make the game better. Really, really good stuff. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start this same day delivery uh, mission chain. Uh, 
I'm picking up a job, and uh, also this is only because I have a dev build why I have this many jobs. Just pretend there's only like six available. This was for testing purposes. We could probably remove this now, Andy. What do you think? Probably remove the this from the dev build, but I digress. Uh, we'll do a hitman job, ramen delivery, destroy a base. All little goods is actually a lot of fun. I do like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and why not an item retrieval? We'll do way more for Kato than he's actually asking for, but we'll set ourselves up for next time. And before next time, I'm also just going to clean up my inventory. That way, when we start next time, we'll just like fly right on in. So I do want you guys to like be thinking about questions you have right now. Excuse me. Because we are going to be answering those very, very soon. Just a matter of moments. Just want to clean this up. And we're going to just dismantle all of that. I am trying to continue to feed in some more resources for crafting. I think that's actually really important for all of you guys to do um, instead of just go for credits. Sometimes it's better to go for credits, of course. It just depends. We didn't get that long range kill. I wonder if I could cheese that in a similar way that I cheesed the destroying an anti drone missile. We might do that real quick. <laughs> I have an idea. Let's see if we can pull it off. Allow me to remind you how this works. We require you to make three deliveries using our own drones. There's no enemies in the area. Delivery in time. A small percentage will be deducted from your payment. Got it. Thank you. Where are the enemies at? Prescott is not a safe place. I must be scared because Gary's on the comms. It's the only, it's the only reason. There was loads of them flying around the last time I came here. I think it must be just your beautiful face on the screen scared everyone. <laughs> it's probably, that's probably more like it. Yep. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I guess we're not going to cheese this. It's fine. It's fine. We got 20 minutes left in the stream. But um, if there are any questions, though, uh, Gary, that you see right now that would require me or would be beneficial for me to show in game, um, if you could just do a quick check, we'll do yeah. that first before we jump over to screenshots. But yeah, yeah. Uh, we're getting we're slowly winding down the stream, ladies and gentlemen. We got about 20 minutes left. Thank you so much for being here. It's been it's been a, a blast today. We're gonna have a really good time today. Yeah, I've got nothing lined up in terms of uh, what you could show in game currently. Okay, no worries. So we're going to dock here, uh, restock, and we're going to save the game. Boom. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, give me just one moment as we cycle over to our screenshots showcase. Uh, we are still going to be answering questions, so. Don't be shy if you've got a question about Everspace 2 in its current format, or even questions about where it's going in development, we will answer your questions to the best of our abilities, which means uh, what we're allowed. Uh, and you know, we will absolutely hook you up with what we can, where we can. It's our pleasure, really. Uh, so don't be shy. One moment. Okay. Mm. I feel like that was a that was a really pleasant gameplay segment that we had today. Uh, so thank you everybody for uh, swinging in and watching and asking questions. Like we, we've been having a really good day today. Um, it is solid. So let's uh, let's top it off with some excellence in screenshots. Look at this guy! Holy crap, Bradley! I mean, I don't even know what to say other than freaking wow, man! Like that's that this is ah. Oh. Yes, yes, please. 
I very much desire screenshots like this. Um, I saw this one post on the Discord immediately. I was like, mine, your mind now. I shall take this. Um, incredible shot. Love the way that the focus is on the moon, and yet somehow you get this grand sense of scale. Um, gosh, it, it seriously rocks. So, all right. Anyway, questions. Let's start getting into those. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, we've got one at the moment, uh, okay. and that is from Wizard Jerry over on YouTube. Okay. Uh, he's just wondering, speaking of ship parts, uh, will we get new ship wings in the next update, especially heavy, light ships? Um, that is the... There is a, there is a desire for that. Um, that's what we have uh, said that we want to move in the direction of what we are doing, so um, I'm fairly confident that I can say yes. The only reason why I'm uh, like I had some hesitancy there is I actually haven't followed up with any team members about how that's coming along. <laughs> um, but in our latest timeline uh, uh, our, of like our release windows and whatnot, uh, we did claim that we are going to do uh, more ship parts uh, in particular for like the heavies and the lights, give them more diversity um, for this incursions update. So we'll see how well that lines up. Um, I'm not seeing anybody correct me at this time, so that's a good sign. Uh, last chance, Lee. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, that's there's definitely the direction we're moving in. So good, good. All right, <clears throat> let's keep going through some more screenshots. Um, and if you do have more questions, by all means, now is the time to shine like this freaking photo, also by Bradley. Wowza! goodness that is so incredible i love this shot it just the 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 tone the tonal qualities of the shot it just sets the stage for so much going on here ah it pleases me great. very nice if you couldn't tell you know from all of my excitement uh yeah it's 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 such a clean shot um everything down to the details of his ship which I think is beautifully colored. I think he's customized it very nicely, so kudos to that, Bradley. But then just uh, how it's complemented by this uh, beautiful scene uh, in the back with the sun shining through the clouds. Gosh, that's that's awesome. Very, very good. Um, Gary, when a question does show up, just uh, interrupt me, and we will get an answer. No worries. Cool. Next shot also comes from Bradley. I kind of, I've been trying to categorize the screenshot, so I'm giving everybody's in a row, like to capitalize on the individual, the user, and you can also see a little bit more variety of what they're producing. Um, this this also comes from Bradley. Um, again, it's this, it's a nice arrangement and use of depth of field to give, a, like this almost looks like you're looking out the cockpit window. It's not lined up there, of course, but it's just, it's so clean. It just, it wants to tell a story so bad. Um, and that's why I, I love the way that these are, are composed by Bradley. He uh, does a fantastic job on that front. Um, I believe he's a galactic photographer on our Discord. If he's not, I'm going to change that after the stream. Uh, it's just incredible, incredible work. Everything from, you know, the just the, the focus of this shot to capturing the environmental detail. If you look really closely, you can see lava, for example. Uh, but seriously, it's it's beautiful to witness individuals having a, a strong sense of composition, uh, bringing together these screenshots from the game. It's it's awesome. Uh, Bradley is a galactic photographer already. Good, good, rightly so, I believe. So next up, we've got a shot from Geometry Prime. I believe Geometry Prime is either doing a new playthrough or just hasn't played in a while because I believe the title of this screenshot was their first visit to uh, Kaite Nebula. Uh, Geometry Prime, do you have anything to say for yourself? Are you in the chat? Like, what, have you just been busy? What's going on, man? So it's, I mean, maybe it's his, his new playthrough since the Armed and Dangerous update, which I could respect. Uh, honestly, I, I love... I have loved restarting the game since that update. It has enriched the game so much, having all of that concept from the very beginning. It's it's a lot of fun. I am very likely also going to do that again whenever we get this Incursions update out. Um, I don't know for the stream or not. Just don't freak out. I, I might not do a full wipe there uh, just for showcasing purposes. But uh, from, from a private standpoint, do you guys know that I play this game for self-enjoyment? 
I'm not just doing this because I have to and it's my job. I actually like playing this game. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> That's why you yeah. did it, just for self-harm. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, so, well, I mean, when, whenever I get to those gas harvesters, man, let me tell you what. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's a fantastic screenshot from uh, Geometry Prime. Uh, love, love what you're bringing together. Very good, very good. Uh, playing games for fun, what? Dude, seriously though, uh, for the real Steiny Gate over on Twitch, I will tell you, the number of friends that I have who go into like this mode of, I have to play this game because it's been on my backlog and I have to get these uh, achievements in the game and, and complete it uh, before I jump to the next one. The, the, the transformation of playing games for fun into like a chore list, it breaks my heart. It seriously does. Um, you know, so yeah, it, it shouldn't be challenged. It shouldn't be challenged. Like that should come across as like sarcasm, playing games for fun, lol. Uh, but man, I, I tell you what, I think that a lot of individuals out there who thought they were gonna get deep thoughts in the stream today, eh? Um, I, I really do encourage you guys to have that mindset of a game is made to enjoy, a game is made to have fun. Um, if it starts feeling like a checklist of chores, deep breath, step back, touch grass. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, pro pro life pointers from Eric from Rockfish Games. Anyway, let's keep going. Next shot comes. <laughs> next shot comes from Kaza. A beautiful shot uh, over in uh, the Kait Nebula. Love the jellies. Mmm, the jellies are so delicious. Love the way they come together. Love the way it comes together. Just the, the colors very much pop. Um, and I love the differences, environments, and, and there's not a lot of individuals who take a lot of scenes in Kite Nebula, which is ironic because I think it has some of the most um, uh, detailed locations in the whole game. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a, it's a, this is a great shot. Really tells the tale of um, how unique this nebula is. So really, really good stuff. Really I have stuff. a question from J.R. Pantiotti over yeah. on YouTube. Uh, they're just wondering, when you fly around and you run into random patches of rocks, not intentionally, but they just visually, uh, when you're meant to, uh, were they meant to be something at one time, or is it just for atmospheric purposes? Atmospheric purposes, yeah. Yeah. Atmospheric purposes. You'll find that most of our development, um, we would not create something unless there was a specific purpose associated with it, and atmospheric is also one of them. Um, and you don't have to take my word for it on this front either. If you have access to the prototype, um, or if you like, just do a quick search of the Everspace 2 prototype and watch gameplay of it, you'll see that basically all of the content that was created at that time is now in the game. It's not used in the same capacity and it's certainly evolved. But uh, we, we do not like making content to then not, not utilize it. So everything has, very much has a purpose, um, including if it's just like environmental. So yeah, it's a clever, clever little question. I, I appreciate that. That's a solid question. Uh, next shot we have comes from Sonozaki uh, talking about the Kaite Nebula and being such a, a beautiful place to, to photo. I think this one definitely captures that spirit. Um, I love the this location as a whole, I, I still remember when we were we were pulling out a couple of tricks from Unreal Engine 4 at the time, and what you could do with environmental design. When we were working on this planet, I shared screenshots of it, and I, I made up a story like I was out hiking or something, I can't remember what I said, and I shared photos of it, and then at the end of it I said, I'm just kidding, I wasn't out hiking, these are actually screenshots from the, the, the planet location that's coming soon at that time. It, it's seriously, I, I love the way that this location comes together. And I think that uh, Sonazaki captures the um, isolation of being out on an alien world here really well. So good stuff. Good stuff. <clears throat> All right. Next shot we got from Typed Kibbles. Um, I wanted to share this one. Uh, because I think it looks like a ship's getting like blown in half. I just think that's awesome. There's not really much else to say, but it is a, a beautifully placed Arc 9000 to hit two drone carriers in one shot. Like that's, I, uh, kudos to you, that's efficient. And uh, we at Rockfish Games do in fact like efficiency. Strong German company, you know it. So uh, it's good, good stuff. 
love this shot. In fact, I think it's done really well. Uh, makes my heart happy, so thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, typed Kibbles 960 pleases me really. Next shot, we have Winged Nightmare, which got a ton of upvotes on the Discord, so I had to share it. You guys liked it, so psh, making sure everybody sees it. Um, I think he likes the color yellow, um, but more so, I think it's pretty clever in how he's aligned the laser blasts with Zarkov's uh, star. <coughs> Excuse me. To make it almost look like it's this massive explosion that's happening down below. Um, really playful, really fun. I think it's a clever photography and we want to honor that clever photography oh whoop, that, whoop, dip. go away <clears throat> but uh good good stuff so uh yeah we also have um two more screenshots to show two more screenshots to show which are both fan art this one's been a long time coming oh my gosh bearded frog i am so sorry i was gonna show this in like freaking a month and a half ago and I missed it, and then I got sick, and then I got sick again. <laughs> but now we're here. Finally, we can reveal this beautiful, beautiful work um, to highlight the incredibly powerful Rockat Rockfish Edition um, keyboard that allows you to use your ultimate because the G key is so hard to find. Thank you so much. Whenever you get this produced, let me know. Um, I would love, oh my gosh, I would love to purchase this. That's truly gonna up my game tenfold. I am confident of that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's so good. Yeah, if you wanna see this in a little bit more detail and like be able to read all the wording, definitely head over to the Discord, it's in there. Um, or you know, you could just pause the screen right now and read it. All right, we're moving on. So good, good stuff. Last one to share. Uh, Clever Kazaa, this just looks like a very normal uh, screen of, you know, cataloging your game. And because it is, uh, but if you are incredibly clever, he noted that this was my particular uh, game stats. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think something may have been added here. Uh, <laughs> so just, uh, I think that was uh, pretty clever definitely want to honor you guys who are just having some cheeky fun well played sir. well played so thank you so much everybody on uh, account of rockfish games for being a part of this great community uh, for having fun with us i mean yes we made this game to enjoy uh, but it's not just for ourselves it's for you guys and when you are getting this amount of satisfaction to like play around with it and send stuff like this back to us we love it oh my gosh it gives us so much energy it's it's incredibly exciting it's instead of incredibly fulfilling uh, so don't stop being awesome on that front because I won't stop being Eric, your community ambassador. Uh, Gary, did you have anything that you wanted to say as we close down the stream today? No, not really. Okay. No, can't think of anything. Right, <laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, thanks very much for the other couple of weeks where uh, everybody's been in chat and uh, giving me not too much grief for dying in hardcore mode or hard mode rather. Uh, you know, I enjoy it. I show you how to die you know, in many ways, and I think that's always the best way to do it. You know, you can fail in the game, you get back up and try again. <laughs> well, that's my excuse anyway. No, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely need to practice my gas harvesting skills. Maybe that's something that you can instruct me on. Uh, and maybe I can give you some pointers in those high risk areas and whatnot. We'll just have a nice exchange of information. But otherwise, right. um, <laughs> otherwise, folks, don't stop being awesome, and we will catch you in the next stream two weeks from now. We actually just had this beautiful new Discord feature where we can assign the streams to just auto-generate every two weeks. So that next event is already there. So if you're not a part of the Discord and you don't want to miss any of the streams, head on over there. It's under the events. You're going to see it. It will always be there so you never miss a stream. I guess I could also say very briefly that we did tidy up the Discord very lightly. So if you're looking for support, uh, we created an entirely new category for the support system where you're going to find the frequently asked questions and the support forum. Just ease of use type of stuff. Nothing yeah. else. All right. Um, I've already kind of said the goodbyes, but I'm going to say it again. Don't stop being awesome, and we'll catch you in two weeks. Toodles!
You didn't think I was leaving without some fun, did ya? It's been too long. I gotta be an absolute dork nozzle for you guys. So we're gonna have a little bit of a beatboxing session. <clears throat> I never know how it's gonna go, but we're gonna do it anyway. All right. Also, uh, uh, actually quick, I need to do a quick, quick thing. Super duper quick. Nope, never mind. Everything's all, all is well. All right, let's have some fun. weekend everybody thank you so much for sticking around for my dorkiness uh and also sincere thank you so much for all the support and love that you give us uh we want to keep doing this uh as you know moving forward uh giving you all the informations that we can do in the course of these streams hope that you are looking forward to future content like i am like we are oh my gosh and don't be afraid to engage with us get on the discord get on reddit get on twitter get on twitch youtube you know all the things do it! It helps us grow, sincerely. And we really want to grow with you guys, because you're awesome. Don't stop being awesome. <laughs>